All right, what are the things I remember about Orlando Furioso? Because I am having a hard time getting my off my butt and kind of compiling a list, so I'm just going to stand here and list things that I remember about Orlando Furioso. I remember at the beginning being sort of semi sort of giddy at uh, there being at the kind of at the rhyming scheme of the poem, how it's almost got a kind of a setup uh, and then kind of a punchline at the end with uh, two couplets that uh, are it's like you know it's a b a b a b and then c c um that's probably not accurate as to the actual rhyming scheme of the poem but it's got that thing and it's got that kind of jaunt to it that kind of drive to it and that um that kind of jokey quality to the the text um I, I, aristo is very much so is it's like there's i mean there's a lot of serious sad madness uh passion in here but there's also just kind of a humor to it humor to the whole thing that um sometimes uh highlights highlights the the fantasy highlights the absurdity of it uh sometimes i think is kind of taking apart great great men and uh saying kind of funny eh uh, so there's that. There's that kind of just a general overall thing uh, of of the poem, of the, this long, long-ass poem that way. Um, I remember uh, it's very much a work that, I mean, this is the thing with older works. They are written for rich, a lot of cases, the art of this time seems to have been made for rich patrons. That's who's paying the bill. And uh, in a poem, you never forget this. This is a poem that, um, putting aside Orlando Furioso, because he does get put aside um, fairly, um, like, you know, it's like three quarters of the way through the poem. It's like, okay, Orlando Furioso is done. And this is all about the founding of the Este line. Uh, a potly? Apotli Este is the patron. I have to make sure I actually learn his name. And uh, there's good hunks of this book, which are all about um, uh, a, a, a great um, a great celebration of this, the line of this uh, patron. And uh, to know that the uh, patron in question was a miserly asshole <laughs> adds an interesting interesting thing to that and maybe kind of points to the fact of 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 exactly um by showing the greatness of his ancestors maybe not showing the greatness of his patron but showing the smallness of his patron or saying like you know and and and, and you can't help but get kind of get this kind of irony here of them of him talking about the greatness the generosity the um nobleness of these ancestors and of course of course how my patron is exactly like that as well kind of as much as you can hint that sort of stuff and still get paid and not get in major amounts of trouble i i, I do persist in reading that there i mean it's a different time well is it a different time we're always sucking up to our is 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 there often the thing of even nowadays you have um big corporations who suck up to their customers uh fan service and stuff like that is, is this just merely another way of uh of of pleasing pleasing your masters whether they be a singular person or multiple people um that's a kind of a question of art in itself uh whether an artist uh you know, is an artist primarily writing to please themselves or is an artist got most of their focus on their audience? And I don't think, I think, I think actual artists that, that are going to survive are not going to just simply focus upon themselves or they're going to focus on an ideal audience, their ideal idea of an audience um, to survive. So yeah, that's the, some interesting little things in there. Um, I'm always, you know, uh, I think the big thing that struck strikes me in this book is the idea of Orlando going insane because uh, Angelica chooses somebody else, and uh, going going insane and becoming a murder, becoming a 
raving murderer who who commits mass murder <laughs> um and that that uh having some very kind of uncomfortable uh kind of echoes of today and you know as much as uh things are fantastical i always think that fantasy is still very much i think the you know great fantasy is always commenting on re on our everyday life and i see someone like orlando and i think of i think of somebody who's who's um you know who be who becomes a mass who becomes a, a ma like a shooter or something like that so somebody who goes in and murders a ton of people um there's that kind of idea um i think one of the other things is how uh different things that i books that i encountered during reading orlando furioso um uh, changed my changed my reading as I went along. Uh, probably chief among those is Distant Mirror by Barbara Tuckman, uh, a book about uh, the 14th century, about the Hundred Year War, about uh, a lot of nobles and stuff like that who who were the super powerful. They, they were these chival chivalrous knights, or they were supposedly going with the uh, the idea of chivalry and how chivalry. Um, and Tuckman doing a good job of showing how chivalry only applied if you were in that cast at that class and the ones that were below you could just get murdered willy-nilly uh, at, at at whim and that was completely fine and that that is definitely shown in in or Orlando Furioso where Orlando uh, Regurio um, various heroes of the book um, will for their own reasons just murder swaths of people uh, um, um, Roland, Rolando, Rolando, uh, just cuts his swaths. Rolando and Regurio both cut their swath through, you know, thousands of like regular people. They are deadly fighting machines, which were what knights were. You, 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 you take away the kind of the fantasy hyperbole of people wearing, you know, the, 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 the armor and the swords of Hector and stuff like that. And like, yeah, these were highly, high, well armed. Uh, virtually impossible to kill through the technology of the time. Um, super, super, super tankers, uh, aircraft carrier. I always think of them like an aircraft carrier, something ridiculously powerful that just plowed, plowed through uh, poor, you know, cannon fodder, uh, peasants, peasantry, and stuff like that. Um, so that's very much a thing. Um, I thought, th think very much of the. Um, the views of women in the book, uh, women as, um, as you know, the, definitely the idea of cuckoldry uh, is very much in this book, a male anxiety over cuckoldry. See, I'm shifting away from the feminine now to it's very much a male viewpoint of feminine. Um, you know, there are, men, yes, there are plenty of kick-ass female warriors in this book. Uh, there are also uh, shrews and uh, evil, evil, evil women who have betrayed betrayed their guys, um, and there's definitely kind of a tension that uh, Aristo says, like, "Oh, I'm sorry, ladies. I, I'm, I'm talking about this horrible, horrible, horrible women, but that's just because I haven't met all you really wonderful, nice ones." <laughs> that would be something um, to bring up and to to get particular quotes on. Um, yeah, there's the weird structural thing of this book is that just that Orlando, his story, it just gets kind of finished, kind of uh, what in 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 a way that feels kind of anticlimactic in this book of of uh, he goes insane and somebody else goes to the moon, finds the sanity, gives it back to him, the end, <laughs> and then we continue on with uh, Regurio and Bradamante's story for the rest of the poem. Uh, uh, in a spoiler category, I guess would just be the end of this poem, where uh, it ends very sharply. And I know that they've talked. It, it's it's. I've heard, listened to either Tom at LA Books or uh, I think it's Tom at LA Books or, or, or others talk about how he had he had he had done a couple of different versions, and he was intending on doing another one. And you wonder if like is the ending is that how the ending was supposed to be? Because it really ends like somebody they have they have a fight someone dies and the end and like there's no it's it's a very sharp sharp chop chopped off ending it's like someone finished that and we're going to continue on with the next canto 
next canto but drop dead before they could get to it uh it's got that it's got that feel to it um you know i far from me i didn't want to have to hear more about the este line and and how great uh the patron was it's like no it ends with a big fight um i think uh as a modern audience it's somebody who's not as well well versed not well versed at all really in kind of the mythology and this families and stuff like that there were sections here where it was just like it was an entire it was entire canto it felt of them listing the armies uh of of the thing listing the people in the things i read this out loud so like trying to pronounce these names was a pain and i completely failed and there's just like hours and hours of gib of me making gibberish uh coming out of my mouth um but uh, so yeah, there, there's stuff like that where it's just like, okay, here's the list section. Here's, here's the listing of all the people section and it goes on and it goes on and it goes on. That however, is, is dwarfed by all the kind of the wonderful sections of, um, there are like a ton of battles in here, which I wasn't as interested in, but the kind of the individual, um, we go from massive battles and great act and, and some genuinely great action scenes which i do and did enjoy and uh, not so much the kind of the giant group battles but the individual battles uh to really just kind of funny stuff of of um of various various characters squabbling uh we have a section where um uh, alstolfo an english knight uh great you know english name alstolfo uh gets shipwrecked uh in um these women who uh, were have been have been on uh, kind of isolated and uh, set up a female society uh, for for you know a gener for like two thousand years they've been they've been here uh, with a couple of ins with some enslaved men but the women ruling though oddly enough with the structure where they even if it's a woman ru ruled society they end up cap have setting it up so that there's a guy in charge of them still it's kind of odd that way. Um, so yeah, yeah. Um, th and there's plenty more, there's plenty more where that came from that I should talk about. Um, there's this whole thing of, there's a prophecy, which I think, I don't quite understand of, of Regirio is going to die shortly after he, he, he becomes a Christian and marries Bradamante. Uh, but that that never gets fulfilled within the, 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 the space of the poem, which is odd. Um, uh, even though uh, the sorcerer Atlante is extremely concerned about this, so concerned that he's he, he keeps uh, Regurio, uh away from Bradamante for large for a large swath of thing, and then other events keep him away from it as well. Um, and there is the whole thing in this book of yes it's uh, you know all these all these books of of uh of of uh christian chivalry uh they've they've always got the other which is the uh sarsen uh the more the uh the outside the the heretic religion outside and um it's interesting that like yeah that even though uh i think we do get kind of uh, rather and in the end of um, a rather uh, neg we get a negative uh, portrayal of the king uh, king of the Sarsens uh, Mar Marsante Marcel uh, I can't remember his name now but um, there's also just a lot of like really good noble um, people within the thing not to mention just like Angelica herself and uh, the the woman who says no to Orlando uh, after being kidnapped and then fought over as a prize and just assume that she's going to take, uh, she's going to just uh, accept whoever's going to uh, claim her as his own prize. Uh, she doesn't. She doesn't. She 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 actually rebels. And um, But yet she's a, she's a character who's like, yeah, she said no. She took off. And that's the end of it. We're, we're not, we're, we're just going to drop her like a hot rock. Um, that's never kind of I mean, it's resolved in the sense of, yeah, she made her decision and she decided to exit the poem. But it's interesting that uh, 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 Aristo made that decision uh, for this, this poem. It's, it's, it feels odd. It feels odd. Um, 
yeah, so okay, that is that is me rambling on for a little while there about the poem. There's some ideas in there. Uh, I think there could be a lot more and there could be a lot more focus and I could probably group things together into into much more coherent things. Uh, there is the knight who gets defeated by a, a lady knight. Learning that it's a lady knight, he blushes so hard his armor turns red, which I just, I still love. I still love that as, as imagery uh, in this poetry, which I will definitely think. I, I do think there's a good thing, a good part of this Orlando Furioso, which is uh, male anxiety, the po the epic poem. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. And I mean, probably the other thing would be just to kind of take a look through uh, stuff that Tom at LA Books has written, written because he's far, far more um, focused on the faith aspect of it, which I, for the most part, I don't find in this poem. Um, even like Orlando, his, his, his insanity at first is framed as him finding out that Angelica has chosen someone else and has slept with someone else, but it gets reframed as a punishment from heaven for his being, being not, uh, properly, uh, subservient to God, I think would be a way of, a fair way of putting it, I think. Um, and, uh, and so his punishment was to go insane and murder a ton of innocent people. Uh, but I'm sure they weren't innocent either. All right. All right. I'm going to leave it there. More videos later.